Joining us for the Australian Turf Club, Anthony Cummings. How are you, Anthony? Yeah, mate, very well. Isn't this a wonderful place? Uh, well, it doesn't get any better, does it? No, I absolutely love mm. it. And uh, tell us about what this place meant to you when you came here as a boy. It's uh, it's sort of hard to put in words, but it, it, you know, I'd grown up in Adelaide and watched sort of Melbourne and Sydney from a distance, you know, as I grew up, and more interested in that than in any school book I ever saw. Mm. Um, and you know, I had a decision to make when I was, uh, you know, about 17, 18, 19 and whatever about, you know, what I was going to do. And I had options, you know, so obviously enough in the stable. Uh, and one was to go to Melbourne, one was to come here or stay in Adelaide, and whatever. And I finished up coming to Sydney simply because it was somewhere where you could be yourself and prove to be yourself and where, you know, while the dad's name was never one you could run away from, it was one where you could make your own name, uh, you know, without being in his shadow as I would have been in Melbourne or Adelaide. Yeah, well, you've certainly done that, and uh, let's let's wind the clock back a bit mm. because uh, Doncaster's. I know, like you've had yeah. so many close calls in Doncaster. Yeah, uh, Casino Prince. Uh, everyone knows that story. But Road to Rock um, probably should have won that Doncaster. Well, I thought so. Um, the um, you know, Ollie had a big breakfast on the plane coming up, uh, and it uh, it made a difference. Going up on the inside, Road to Rock, and Rangi Rangdu is joining in on the outside. Is it his day to day? It's Road to Rock and Rangi Rangdu fighting it out. Rangi Rangdu on the outside is in front, and Rangi Rangdu gets his Group One. Beat Road to Rock. Brilliant. He's having a bit of a lend in his work, uh, mm. and hadn't really trimmed up the way he'd wanted him to. So we ran him in a 2,000 metre race that ran about a couple of three weeks before the race. Mm. Uh, and I told the bloke just to drive him out of the gates. Can't, we, I'm not sure if he'd be allowed to do it these days, but to drive him out of the gates, put him in it from the, from the get-go mm. and just push him and sort of get him in there and try and sort of stir the competitive juices a bit. Yeah. Uh, and in doing that, he did, uh, but he couldn't finish the race off once again because, you know, in his track work, he was having a bit of a bludgeon and, and had, hadn't gotten the fitness that was required out of those earlier runs. Mm. Anyway, having had that, uh, he was quite switched on and his work leading into the race here, uh, you know, we were quite keen on his prospects and thought he could win. Mm. Um, yeah, I thought I convinced um, uh, Ollie's manager and uh, Mark Van Treat and, and Ollie himself, but uh, obviously didn't, didn't do a well enough job or a good enough job to, to have him avoid breakfast. Yes, that can happen sometimes, <laughs> I suppose. It's it, it just a reminder of how much discipline jockeys need. But Queen Elizabeth Stakes, one week later, I know I didn't make up for it, but the Queen Elizabeth, a great win. Yeah, it was fantastic. I think it was probably close to his best win. Mm. Uh, the, uh, he was sort of going up the ladder in terms of fitness. The, the, the hard run of the mile the week before it sort of uh, it was the icing on the cake and he turned up in spades on that day. Here's Road to Rock, he's chiming in fast on the outside. Road to Rock raced up and hit the lead with triple honour. Road to Rock shot away, he was uh, second in the Doncaster, he weighed in overweight but he's got the cash today. And Road to Rock comes in to win it, beat triple honour, third home Monaco console. And he went on to be a great stallion. We yep. only, only lost him a few months ago, but mm. Beauty Generation in Hong Kong, uh, that was one of your, your great business decisions, uh, selling <laughs> yeah. him up there. Because uh, what, he's won nearly 15 million Australia. Yeah, he's done really well. I mean, he, he basically did well for everyone who came near him. Mm. Uh, and um, the, um, I approached the, the sales in New Zealand with a view about uh, what I wanted from a road to rock, the sort of mm. pedigree that, uh, that I was looking for, and uh, what became Montaigne here in Beauty Generation. In, uh, in in Hong Kong was that horse, mm. uh, and he won first up for us at Warwick Farm, and uh, you know did a great job for us here. I think he only won the two races, but Group One placed, mm. uh, and then you know we got a, uh, an offer that was uh, impossible to refuse to go to, uh, to, go like to Hong the Kong. Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Well, it was much much more uh, uh, politely put. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and 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 look, we lost Might and Power on Easter Sunday, mm. and. Uh, Tell us that story, because you, you, you found Martin Power. Yeah, um, I'd been buying a few horses for Nick Moratis uh, in that sale series, uh, and we had a, a few on our list, you know, for Easter, uh, of, of which you know um, the uh, that Zabil Colt was one. Um, the uh, Wednesday night when he went through, um, Nick had uh, pretty much put his cue in the rack. Uh, and uh, the horse was passed in for the sake of that, so I didn't have a. Mm. We bought a few horses, and I didn't have another client to, to, to fill in, and so I, I didn't take the pump. But when he was passed in, I got excited uh, and sort of ran over uh, to where the horse had been stabled. Nelson Schick was there, uh, and uh, we shook hands on a deal. Uh, and then I sort of walked back, and I'd seen Nick on the way there, and he stopped to ask me what I was up to, and I said, Oh, that was a Bill Colton. He said, Oh, let me know how you get on. 
So uh, I did, uh, and he did, and you know, the, I suppose the rest, as they say, is history. What a horse, what a, mm. what a mighty horse he was. All right, so what about Mizzy and uh, Libertini fans uh, mm. excited about the spring? They're, they're having a rest, obviously, both yes. of them. Yeah, both having a rest right now. Uh, Mizzy, in a, a second trial, unfortunately, hurt herself behind and had to go out for a while. Uh, but she comes back on a schedule that we'll have her ready for uh, Everest time. Uh, and if uh, she'll have one run leading in, and if she impresses, I'd be hopeful that she'd get a start there. You know, she's shown herself of that quality. Um, you know, the the um, the run of the, the Scirocco here was, you know, exceptional. And, mm. you know, she's been uh, around the place in Group 1 races and it'd be nice to be a, a starter in that race at least. Uh, and Libertini equally. You know, we're, we're in a year where the, the, uh, her generation of uh, three-year-olds won mm. um, the Everest, you know, it would be nice to see her go back there and add something to that year. Wouldn't that be amazing? Mm. And look, Prince Farwas, uh, I'll finish off. I love this. It's a human interest story. Mm. And that's one of the things about horse racing. You know it better than anyone. Mm. It, it, it really does lift the spirits of people, brings people together. I know we aren't yeah. able to have crowds, but hopefully over the next few months that will return. Mm. But it's a great story, isn't it, Prince Farwas? He's a Group 1 winner, second yep. in the Rose Hill Guineas this time around. Yeah, he, you know, horses play on your emotions. I mean, they get you up, they get you down. Um, but, you know, it is a, a very exciting business. It doesn't matter how long you're in it and, you know, how, how mundane some days might seem. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it does get you up. So. You know, the Prince Farwas guys uh, had a, a mate that unfortunately died uh, and, you know, they'd been a, a, as a group together for a fair while and they wanted to do something in respect of him and his memory mm. uh, and uh, they decided to buy a horse and name it after him. So that's what they did. Mm. Um, Edward, my son, uh, met them at a, uh, in a, met a wedding in Sicily mm. uh, and they talked about all, all those sorts of things. So they came to the stable on, when, when they got back got themselves organised and we showed them two horses. One became Baller uh, and the other one was um, uh, Prince Farwas, both you know, more than respectable uh, yeah. and worth the trouble. Uh, Prince Farwas is where they finished up. Um, and as you say, Group 1 winner, uh, you know, Group 1 second in the, in the Rose Hill Guineas uh, and a lot more to come, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I look forward to that moment when we get that group of boys and others yeah. that are horse owners They're to celebrate fellas. in the manner in yeah. which they did. Uh, uh, and look, finally, it's just been great, to, uh, you know, thanks to a lot of the work by the Australian Turf Club mm. and Racing New South Wales that we've just kept racing and you've kept your 30 odd staff mm. employed. Mm. I mean, it's, it's been a huge effort by the industry here. When you look around the world and, and lots of places going through what Australia is going through and to have the, the, the mindset uh, and to just sell the idea to the authorities that we can do this, uh, we can keep it going, keep people employed, keep the racing going, give people something to look at and still maintain, you know, all the of the, the different regulations that have been put in place. So, you know, all kudos to them and for, to all the participants that have lived by that in that time. Always a pleasure, Anthony. Pleasure.